On this channel, I intend to show off ways that Python is supposed to be used. But every now and then, it's fun to look at a way that Python perhaps isn't supposed to be used. In this particular video, we are looking at how to extract locals or capture locals from a function, something which is not ordinarily possible. Now, something like this probably finds its biggest use in testing. So if you have a function with a load of locals within it, you may want to check the internal state of that function to make sure that everything's running properly, especially if it returns something very limited or perhaps doesn't even return anything at all. Now, the reason why this is in the Jankfest series is because it is a little bit of a hack, but it is actually quite a clean solution. I should say that the implementation I'm about to show you today is my own personal interpretation of a solution that I found online. I've just re-implemented it to be function-based rather than class-based and strongly typed where it wasn't before, but I'll leave the original implementation in the description. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. But with all that out of the way, let's throw the Python rulebook out the window. <laughs> so to demonstrate what this function does, I have got another function on the screen, which is the, let me get it on my other screen, the sieve of Aratosthenes. I think I'm pronouncing that right, I really don't know. But it is a, a particularly old, but also very efficient way of finding all the prime numbers up to a certain point. I'm not gonna go into a huge detail about the implementation because it doesn't matter here. This is just completely unrelated. It's just a good test function. But I will leave links in the description if you wanna know how it works, because uh, it is actually really cool. Uh, but we're gonna use it as a test for our function because it does have a lot of locals in it. So you can see that it returns this list <clears throat> that we generate via list comprehension. But inside it has this numbers, i and j, that aren't part of the inputs and aren't part of the outputs. And as such, we never actually see them outside the function because ordinarily it's not possible to get these uh, variables out of the function. But if we do from capture, import capture locals and I have actually got it implemented in capture at the moment we will implement it from scratch so that's what this video is about and then it's implemented as a dictionary so if you do capture locals and then sieve and then pass say the number 30 uh, we can see that uh, oh I need to print it out that would probably help do 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 there we go we can see that we get the result in this first argument. So this is what the sieve actually returns. So this is all the prime numbers up to 30. And then in this dictionary, uh, we have all the locals at the time that the function returned. Uh, so you can't get them for any point. It has to be at the time the function returns. But max is 30, because that's what we passed in. The numbers, um, this is part of the implementation of how it works. It's like a masking thing. Uh, so that is set like that at the end. And then i is 5 and j is 25. These are just the numbers uh, that these iterations ended on. So if we go into our capture.py and actually go to implement this, and you can see that I've actually removed it all because we're going to re-implement it from scratch. I'm going to talk about it. Uh, I'm going to show off a type hinted version at the end, but I'm not going to use type hints to begin with because I don't want to confuse people. Because uh, <laughs> the type hints are a bit weird on this one. Uh, so first we need to import sys, and we'll come back to that in the end. And then we need to do def uh, capture locals. And the way I've chosen to implement this is as a dictionary. So we, or not a dictionary, a decorator. So we pass the function in. There are a few reasons for that. Well, there's one main reason for that. And that is actually the type hinting. It's much easier to strongly type this function when it's a decorator, I found, rather than having it. So you do something like this. Uh, I found that pramspec just was not okay with that. Um, so it is what it is, but. It's fine. And then we have our wrapper in here that takes args and quags. We can pass that and then we return wrapper. And within our wrapper, this is where all the fun stuff happens. So we need to first set a dictionary that will contain all of our locals. So this is going to be just F locals, which is an empty dictionary. And then we def need to define within this function, another function called profiler. And this might give you a hint of where we're going with this uh, with this implementation. So we're gonna have a frame, we're gonna have an event, and we don't actually need the argument, so we're just gonna set that as an underscore. Oh, hello, no spoilers. Uh, we need to set the F locals as a non-local. <clears throat> so what this does is it, it sort of globals 
for closure functions. So this will now share the script. You can see this actually lit up. If I get rid of this line, you can see the F locals goes gray. If I load it up, we can see that it goes in. If I get rid of this, uh, oh, it doesn't go gray. Well, it didn't work when it didn't have non-local, so I don't know. But it's essentially global for closures. Uh, this basically just shares the scope uh, between the two, but it's not a global thing. Um, so it's not quite as awful. And the event is a string. So the event we want is return. And this event is dispatched when uh, the profiled function returns, as it returns, but before it's actually returned, if that makes sense. And then we can set flocals equals frame.flocals.copy. And that will uh, copy all the locals from the frame into flocals. So this frame is, oh, how do I explain this without going into too much detail? It is a stack frame. Um, I'm going to do a video on inspect at some point, and I'll probably go into a bit more detail about it there. But the frame has, it, it's essentially a snapshot of the execution state at that point. So within the function, uh, and, and this frame I believe is tied to the function. So it's a snapshot of a function state at a particular point in time. And at this particular point in time, the frame or the uh, the function and therefore the frame will have a series of local variables within it and that will be a dictionary and that is what we're copying through so we're copying through the locals from the function in the frame at the time before it's returned and we're setting them up here into this hopefully that makes sense <laughs> there's no real easy way of explaining that um, and then first we need to get the original profiler which is sys.getProfile. And then we need to uh, set uh, the profile to this profiler. And this is why it's in Jankfest and not Python is awesome, because we do need to commandeer the profiler for this. So if you are doing, uh, if you're profiling anything, um, just using the C profile even, then this isn't going to work. If you're using a debugger, this probably isn't going to work. However, with that being said, chances are that you are only going to use this in tests. So it's probably fine, as I like to call it. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail about profilers. Uh, I'll probably try and link a better video that talks about them because I haven't done a video yet. But the general gist of it is that we are setting uh, the profiler to this profile. And basically, whenever there is a profile event, uh, this will be called. Uh, and so we're getting the frame and the event when the event is the return event. So when a function returns, uh, then we get the locals back out of it like that. And then we can try to return uh, the function or, uh, you know, just run the function with the arguments and the keyword arguments. And then finally, we set the profiler back to what the original profiler was before. If there wasn't one available, this would just be set to none. And actually as well, we need to um, return the, the function locals. That would, be a, <laughs> that would be somewhat useful to do. But this is the function to capture the locals. And now that we've done that, if we go back into our sieve, we can see that we get that exact same result again. So we have... Uh, the result of the function initially, we can even do, let's do a, a result and an f locals equals that. That's probably more how you do it. You then print the uh, result is result, sure, that's fine. We can actually get rid of that extra space. And then print function locals equals that. And we can see that we get the result here on this line. And the function locals is this dictionary down here. I am going to talk in a bit more detail about the instances where you would want to use it. But I first want to talk about some implementation details in here. So you may choose instead of returning a tuple to return an object or a named tuple. The original implementation that I modified uh, to get this uh, was a class, but it also returned an object. So it actually created, I forget what the object was called. Um, I believe it was just a simple class. But you can return whenever you want. You don't have to return a tuple if you don't want to. I just figured that was probably fairly uh, fairly standard. 
And as well, if you didn't want to implement this as a decorator, you could implement it as a class or you could implement it as a slightly different function. Uh, I will actually bring up the one I've got in my notes here with the typing. And you can see we have this param spec and this param spec just does not work uh, unless um, we are in a decorator because this param spec is just used for decorators. And we want to make sure that the, the arguments and the keyword arguments that are passed to the, the decorated function have the exact same signature as the original function. Otherwise, there's no point. And so that's just why I've done it like this. It's not actually that um, ugly to do. For those that didn't know, you know, this is how you could use a decorator. It's literally just a function that takes another function. The at symbol and all that is just syntactic sugar. So where would you want to use something like this? Um, you would never realistically want to use it in production. There is absolutely no point. If you are at the point where you are using this in production, then you probably want to re-engineer what you've got because in production, you would just care about the inputs and the outputs, and then you wouldn't really care about anything in between. If you were testing something and you wanted to check uh, certain states, especially if the function didn't actually return anything, but you didn't want the function to return that information in production, and you could use this to, uh, to get that function out, and then you can test uh, the, uh, the state of it. So if you wanted to check that numbers had this, um, you know, was exactly in this state, for example, then you could do that. And you would just say, for example, like uh, assert f locals uh, numbers and then equals, I'll just do f locals max. <laughs> Oh no, we'll do we'll do J because uh, that's one of the thingies. Twenty five, and then we can run that again. We can see that on our pass. If we try and assert it as twenty four, we'll see that we get an assertion error. Another particularly cool use for this is if you had a closure uh, function. Uh, I don't quite know how we're going to do this. Let's just say hello world, and then we just like return hello world out of there. Uh, we don't need to call it here for what we want. But now if we run this uh, again, we can see that we have this hello world function and we can actually call this hello world function by uh, running f locals hello uh, world and then use the brackets there. Uh, or maybe not. Oh yeah, we want to we wanna print it, not uh, just, we want to print because it returns it. There we go. And we can see that we're actually now running that function. So if you had a, a closure function that you wouldn't ordinarily be able to test, um, again, you know, you could do like assert uh, this equals uh, hello world, or, you know, it's, it's not going to equal that because it's the wrong casing. You could test that if you wanted to. But if you wanted to be able to test functions that were within a closure, but you didn't want to have to move them out into the into the public namespace where... Uh, your, users, uh, your users can access it and you could use this decorator to pull that function out of the function and then run it and do all the tests on it that you want to do. So in summary, yeah, this is more of a testing thing for sure. Uh, it is a really cool little thing. Uh, I actually had a, a, a real life use case for this at work when I was um, trying to test a function that set up our Sentry SDK. For those that don't, use, uh, don't know Sentry, it's like a, a performance monitoring slash en uh, error monitoring thing. And we have a function that sets it up using the Python SDK um, and it didn't return anything. And I wanted to test that it was doing everything it should and that you know the configurable options were changing the things that they should. And I built this as a by test fixture, believe it or not, to actually be able to check the state of some of the lists uh, in there, but also be able to pull a function out that was enclosed and be able to test to make sure that worked properly as well. And now that function is 100% tested where it would be effectively impossible to do before. Let me know in the comments whether you think this is really cool or whether I've just gone completely mad. The, the correct answer is definitely one of the two. Uh, I'm thinking of putting this on the Python package index if something similar isn't there already. Uh, but I will upload it to the GitHub as well if you want to implement your own thing or whether you want to implement it differently. Either which or doesn't matter to me. If you want to see other ways in which Python can be abused, then you can check out the rest of the Jankfest series, uh, which is in the cards in the end screen. And I'll see you in the next video for whatever we do next.